You know, I was thinking, brought back a story. Pastor Brian was talking about teaching your children to give. I was thinking about when my son, who's 21 now, when he was a toddler, mama gave him a quarter to drop in the offering basket, and the offering basket came by, and the quarter never made it. <laughs> and we're like, son, what happened to the quarter mama gave you? He had eaten it and swallowed it. So thankfully, this too passed. <laughs> but we were many days searching out a treasure we were actually hoping to find. So I'll just leave the story at that. But I was thinking as Pastor Brian was talking, Lord, maybe it was a good thing we didn't give him a half dollar that day. <laughs> we would have been in trouble. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you all this morning. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. We love you. We thank you for the good word of the Lord today. Father, we thank you that every word of God, every promise of God is yes and amen in Jesus, our Messiah. Father, I pray for the shalom of God, the peace of God upon your people. Lord, with all the craziness of this month, Lord, with the sickness, Lord, that's been sweeping the nation, with all the craziness of the holidays, Lord, and the economy and all the anxiety and stress people are under, Father, we need your peace. We need your shalom more than ever. And Father, I pray today for your precious Holy Spirit to speak through me to each and every one of these people as they have need today. By the Spirit of God, in Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen, amen and Amen. So today is actually kind of a part two of last Sunday, and it was kind of interesting because in prayer this week, the Holy Spirit showed me he wasn't done with what he wanted to teach us about Zacharias and about Elizabeth. And of course, next week we celebrate the birth of Jesus, our Savior, and that's what we're going to be talking about, amen? But this week, I want us to really see and understand that Heavenly Father always has a plan and had a plan leading up to the birth of Jesus, amen? Had all this pre-planned out. So last week we said that Mary had a choice to make. Remember the angel Gabriel appeared unto her and said, Mary, you're going to bear forth a son. You're going to call his name Jesus or Yeshua in Hebrew. You're going to call his name God is salvation. Amen. And uh, he's like, he's going to be a savior of the world. He's going to save your people from their sins. And Mary's like, how can this be? I've never known a man. I'm unmarried. And he says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And Mary's reply was, let it be to me according to your word. She said, yes, Lord. Aren't you glad she said yes? Amen. She said, yes, Lord. She had a choice to make. One choice would have been the path of least resistance, but the other path, the path of faith. It would have been easy to say, no, God, you know, I'm young. I'm not married. And, you know, how am I going to explain this to Joseph? And. I mean, I'm being serious. I mean, these are all... Th How many of you know the enemy will supply you with excuses all the time about why you can't be doing the will of God? Why you can't even come to church? He'll give you all kinds of reasons. Learn to just say yes to the Lord. Someone say amen. We talked last week about the contrast of the reaction between Zacharias and that of Mary. And Zacharias, and we're going to reread this again this morning, he was like, well, Lord, how is this going to happen? I'm old, my wife's old. Gabriel's like, hey, dude, I stand before the throne of God. I'm paraphrasing. I came to give you good news, but because you don't believe me, you're going to be mute, unable to speak until your son is born. How many of you know that? Nine months, a long time to be quiet. All the talkers said, Amen. Amen. Wives, maybe you would have been happy if your husband were mute for nine months. I don't know. But it happened. And what I want to talk to you about here this morning is this. God speaks, Heavenly Father speaks after the silence. Heavenly Father speaks after the silence. And I want to show you something about Zachariah's muteness 
and the birth of his son John. And I want to show you something about the promise of God in the Old Covenant, the very last promise that God made to Israel and to his people before a time of silence. I want to start in the last book of the Old Testament in the last chapter. Malachi chapter 4, the last two verses, verse 5 and verse 6. Now I want you to understand that though this is the last book of your Old Testament, it is the beginning of what's known as the great time of silence. Everybody say silence. Because after these words were written by the Holy Spirit through the prophet Malachi, Heavenly Father was silent to Israel for a period of 400 years. Everybody say 400 years. You'd had prophets and kings and priests and all kinds of dramatic things that Heavenly Father had been doing, but all of a sudden, after Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6, heaven went silent for 400 years. Now let's look at what these verses are. Because this is what's so cool. The next time Heavenly Father speaks to man is in fulfillment of the last two verses of Malachi chapter 4 after 400 years. Isn't that amazing? It's like God paused, took a breath, and then continued. I want to show you that today. He says here, Behold, the Lord says, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now, how many of you know and recall the story of Elijah? He was a prophet of God over the northern tribes of Israel, and God caught him up, sent a heavenly chariot. He was caught up in a whirlwind into heaven. He never physically died. There's only two people in the Bible that Scripture tells us they have never physically died. One was Enoch, who walked with God and was not because God took him. The second was Elijah, and the Lord carried him up. So here in Malachi, God's promising that he will send Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now, the great and dreadful day of the Lord is the day of all, the day of God's wrath. It is the day that Jesus Christ returns and sets his feet on the Mount of Olives. Someone says, amen. That's the day of the Lord. And surely Elijah will come before that. Then in verse 6, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the what? Children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. What does that even mean, the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers? Lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. How many of you know that really spiritually speaking, is talking to the children of Israel, their hearts being turned back to God? Their hearts being turned back to God. And we're promised that Elijah is going to come before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And Elijah, even then in the future, is going to repeat this. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And the hearts of the children, he's going to be preaching, the Bible says, in Jerusalem. For a period of time, they're going to be unable to harm him, unable to hurt him. You read about the two prophets in Revelation. I am positive one's going to be Elijah. And finally, at the end of their prophesying, the two prophets are put to death. And all of the world gives gifts as if it's Christmas because they're so happy. The prophets who've been plaguing the earth, telling man to repent or else they wouldn't send rain on and on, are dead. And their bodies are live telecast on television, so the whole world is seeing their bodies laying in the streets. But then God, hallelujah, everybody say, then God. I love that. that. You could end the story right there, amen? But then God, a voice from heaven says, Come up here! And suddenly, life from the Holy Spirit enters into their dead bodies. They come alive and they ascend into heaven. And everybody's going to see it. So I say all that to say that that's the physical fulfillment of this prophecy, but there was a, a spiritual fulfillment that occurred through the son of Zacharias, through John the Baptist. And we're going to look at that. Promised Elijah to come, and truly Elijah will come 
before the day of the Lord. Someone say amen. This was the last word from the Lord for 400 years, complete silence. How many of you are married? How many of you are either one spouse or the other is a talker? You don't have to raise your hand. Lord knows, right? One spouse or the other is a talker. Can you imagine all of a sudden, after they've been talking, your whole life that you've known them and been with them, all of a sudden are just quiet? You'd be like, what's wrong? What's wrong? Babe, what's wrong? Honey, honey, what's wrong? Israel's like, God, you've been speaking to us, I mean, time and time and time again, right? Throughout the entire Old Testament. And all of a sudden, there's nothing from heaven but silence after these verses in Malachi. Then the next time heaven speaks to us again is right here in Luke chapter 1. The angel Gabriel appears to Zacharias. Remember, God's been silent how many years? 400 years. And now God speaks. And Luke chapter gives me chills. God speaks now in Luke chapter 1. Through the messenger from heaven, Gabriel, the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard. Zacharias was a priest of the tribe of Levi. He was serving out his priestly duties, offering incense before God. It was his time to work in the temple. He says, For your prayer is heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. Everybody say John. Now, we're going to talk about that name. There's a lot to be said about that name because I was thinking, you know, Lord, if you'd pre-picked out John's name to be John, it's Yohanan in Hebrew, by the way. I think I said that right, Yohanan. And I said, Lord, there must be something to that name, amen? When God says your name shall be Yeshua, God is salvation, your name shall be Yohanan, there's a reason behind that, and we're going to talk about that here in a little bit. But... God hadn't spoken to Israel for 400 years. The angel Gabriel shows up, says, Zacharias, who's a priest, God's heard your prayers. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. Now, you could stop there and say, well, why would God be silent for 400 years after giving the prophecy in Malachi about Elijah coming before the day of the Lord, and now why would he speak suddenly to Zacharias about him having a son named John? What do the two have to do with each other? I'm going to show you. Verse 14. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, at the birth of John. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. Somebody say, well, that's, Huge. Nowhere in the scripture do you find any baby that's been baptized with the Holy Spirit from its mother's womb. But John, whose name God himself chose, the angel Gabriel says, shall be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. And he, look what he says. This is God speaking after 400 years. What's he say? He quotes Malachi chapter 4 verse 6. The angel Gabriel says, and he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of what? Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for what? For the Lord. This gives me chills, guys. Nothing has happened stance with our Lord. Nothing is by accident. So God speaking to the nation of Israel the entire time from the time of Abraham through Malachi, and the last words in Malachi is Elijah the prophet's going to come. It's going to turn the hearts of the children to the father, the hearts of the father to the children, And this is going to happen before the day of the Lord. 
and then there's absolute silence for 400 years. Then the uh, angel Gabriel shows up on the scene, appears to Zacharias. Zacharias, your prayers are heard. You're going to have a son. You're going to call his name John. There's a reason for that. And John is going to be filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. He's going to operate in the power and spirit of Elijah, and he's going to fulfill Malachi 4, 6 in the spirit. He's going to turn the hearts of the children to the father and the hearts of the fathers to the children, and he's going to bring about a spirit of repentance, and he will be called great. Now God has spoken 400 years later. Someone say amen. The angel Gabriel prophesies over Zacharias that his son shall be in the spirit and power of Elijah. He's going to turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. And isn't that exactly what Elijah did? He dressed like the prophet Elijah. He dressed in his old uh, uh, animal skins. And man, his hair was just, he was like an Old Testament prophet, literally. And he preached a spirit and a baptism of repentance. Amen? For Israel to turn from their ways, the children to turn back to who? Turn back to Heavenly Father. Amen? He did exactly what God prophesied he was going to do. In the last verses of Malachi, and then 400 years of silence, now the Lord is speaking to fulfill his plan. Listen, guys, you need to understand when I say that Heavenly Father has a plan, I'm not just speaking preacher talk. I'm telling you, he's had a plan of redemption from day one, even before Adam and Eve sinned. He already knew what was going to happen. The Bible says before the foundation of the world, he set things in motion to provide a means to bring lost humanity back to home, back to their inheritance, back to faith, back to heaven, back to him, and he laid out this tremendous plan. And you and I get to be a part of it. Now that's on a giant scale. What about on a smaller scale? Do you think Heavenly Father also might have a plan for your life and a purpose for your life more than you could imagine? More than you could think? I've heard this a lot. You know, even yesterday at the Citywide Youth Rally, um, the, the, the youth minister was talking the same thing about to the young people for them to realize God has a purpose. God has a plan for them. You know, I read an article this week, and it broke my heart. It was from the uh, Christian Post. And it said, I think it was from the Christian Post, but the basic gist of the article was that young people in their 20s and 30s are turning in mass in America from the church, from the church. And it's heartbreaking because they need the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? And it means that there's other things that are trying to fill their heart. There is a counterfeit and there is a real. Everybody say there is a real. That's why we cannot be offering these young people religion, guys. I said this Friday night. I am not interested in the religions of man. I am interested in the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit to transform hearts and change lives. That's it, amen? Because they already have a counterfeit. Why do they need more fakery from those who call themselves believers? Someone say amen. They need that which is genuine, that which is real. Amen? Luke chapter 1, verse 18. Zacharias said to the angel, here we go, here comes the excuses. We hit on this last week. He said, how shall I know, Gabriel? How shall I know this? In other words, in some translations based on the Greek, he literally says, how shall I know this for certain, Gabriel? For I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. Listen, guys. When Heavenly Father says he has a purpose for you that goes beyond yourself, don't say, God, how can I know this for certain? Look at me. I'm old. I'm shy. I'm quiet. Remember Moses? I can't talk. I stutter. Isn't that what he said? You've got a burning bush and the angel of the Lord in the burning bush talking to you. And you're saying, God, I can't go. I stutter. 
you got the wrong guy. Go get someone else. <laughs> Read it. That's what it says. You ever told the Lord he's got the wrong guy? I have. He doesn't. He knows exactly what he's doing. Someone say amen. Exactly what he's doing. Aren't you glad? I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful this is not dependent on Bruce. This is dependent on God. Amen? Aren't you glad this is dependent on him and not you? So Zachariah says to the angel, How shall I know this for certain? For I am an old man. My wife is well advanced in years. It's like, angel, dude, I don't know what you know about human anatomy, but my wife's kind of getting old. Really, that's what he's saying. She's kind of getting old. She's like over the hill. She's like past her childbearing years. How many of you know with God all things are possible and nothing is impossible? Look what Gabriel says. The angel answered, said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. You know, I hear sometimes in the spirit, when we have doubt and unbelief to God, where he says, wait a minute, I'm the God of heaven and earth. I created all things. I hold all things together. All the atoms are held together by my spirit. Scientists, by the way, in CERN, still trying to figure out what holds everything together. They call it the God particle. The Bible calls it Jesus. By him, by Jesus, all things are held together. Amen? He's not a particle. He's a person. Amen? So the Lord holds everything together. And you're going to doubt me? Miss Connie, I'm going to steal her thunder. So she came up to me this morning. And she said, Pastor, I have a testimony. I said, okay. She said, my grandchildren, grandbabies were out there, and the boys were trying to get my mower to start. It hadn't started in a year. And grass needed cutting. And she couldn't afford a new mower, and they're out there messing with it and messing with it. They checked the oil. They checked the gas. They checked the spark plug. They checked everything. They could not get it to start. They went in and told her. So she went out there and bold as could be, and God bless you for this, she laid her hand on the mower, and she prayed in front of her grandbaby. She said, Mower, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, you get this mower to start. I can't afford a new one, Lord. Let it be for your glory and for your kingdom. And her grandson then took, and it cranked right up. And not only cranked up, but never died the whole time. And she said her grandbabies were just Grandma's got a secret connection with God. People need the real. They need the genuine. Listen, all grandma's saying I pray all the time ain't going to affect them like when they saw God by his spirit answer that prayer. They'll never forget that, amen? Never forget that. So listen, Gabriel's like, Zacharias, listen, dude, I'm before the presence of God. I was sent to speak to you these glad tidings. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day that these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. Last week I hit on this, but I want to show you something that the Holy Spirit showed me this week. Zacharias's muteness was also a picture of God's silence. Because God gave the prophecy in Malachi and was silent for 400 years. Now, Zacharias is quiet for nine months. And the moment it's fulfilled, he's allowed to what? Speak. Isn't that amazing? That's a little deeper. That's for some of you guys who are uh, a little deeper here. Perhaps the silencing of Zacharias, I put, was also meant to be a reminder to Israel that the silence of God, which was about to come to an end, with the birth of Zacharias' son. Listen, God is not silent in your life. He is speaking all of the time. He only wants you to learn to hear and to listen and to say, yes, Lord, and to believe. Everybody say, and to believe. And to believe. And to believe. Amen. This is Billy Graham's wife, who's passed away, Ruth Graham. 
She wrote this, and I love it. She said, my job is to take care of the possible and to trust God with the impossible. Amen? My job is to take care of the possible. You do what you can do, but you've got to trust God with those things that are impossible in your life. Amen? And know that God's purposes and plans will be fulfilled. Will be. And he wants to use you. That's a privilege. Someone say a privilege. Listen, if mom or dad, if you ask your children to do something, it's a blessing in their life, you're giving them an opportunity to participate in something that's going to bless their life. Amen? God wants you and I to participate with him, not because it's not going to get done without you, but because it has a blessing associated with you and I walking in faith and obedience to the Lord. Amen? There is a blessing that comes upon you. We had six folks go out Friday late afternoon to the Witch Fest out here in Abilene and share the gospel. And they went out, passed out tracts, praying with people, telling them about Jesus. And they came back so excited and so full of the Lord. And I explained to them, when you give out, there is a blessing that Holy Spirit brings back to you immediately. That's why people who share the gospel are always so excited about the Lord. Because there's always that blessing coming back. Amen? So the point is, when you and I say yes to whatever plan he has in your life for you, there's a blessing of joy, a blessing of grace, a blessing of shalom upon that as nothing else in this life that can be offered to satisfy. Amen? You look at that... uh, crypto creep guy, the uh, Sam Bankman dude from FTX, right? He's in chains right now. He's in jail. Billions of dollars at his uh, 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 disposal. Billions of dollars. And I'd rather be where I'm at, doing the will of God, saying yes to Jesus, than all the billions of dollars that the world has to offer. Someone say amen. Amen. Luke chapter 1, verse 57, continuing with our story. Now, Elizabeth. Now, remember Elizabeth? She was the older wife, right? And, of course, Zacharias had to tell the angel she was older as if God didn't know. (laughs) Now, how how many of you know that you can't take God by surprise on anything? Amen? It's like, my wife is older, and I'm older. It's like, uh, Zacharias, I think God knows that. Amen? Now, Elizabeth's. Full time came for her to be delivered, and she brought forth a son. Well, that's a surprise. When her neighbors and relatives heard how the Lord had shown great mercy to her, they what? Rejoiced with her. Isn't that beautiful? People rejoice, right? When Claudia had her baby, people rejoiced with her. When Christine had her baby, people rejoiced with them. Amen? When... um. Uh, uh, Kayla had her baby. People rejoice. I mean, people rejoice when people have children, right? But then look what happens. So it was on the eighth day. Now, you may not know this, but something amazing happens on the eighth day of a Jewish baby, and that's called circumcision. And thank God they do it on the eighth day, not the, 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 the 50th year, amen, or 30th year. So the eighth day... It came about, it was time to circumcise the child, okay? And this is a very special time in a Jewish home when baby turns eight days old, it's circumcision time. And they would have called him by the name of his father, Zacharias. His mother answered and said, no, he shall be called John. How do you think she knew? Zacharias for nine months had been writing. Babe, his name is called John. Gabriel said it. I'm believing it this time. And he had a writing tablet. You're going to see the man he had a writing tablet. He knew how to write. He was a priest. He was writing to her. And so she, for nine months, couldn't hear, but she'd probably seen many times. Well, what if we call his name? His name shall be called John. How many of you know silence can do that to you? Amen. And being made mute, can give you a lot of time to think about things, amen? So Elizabeth tells her relatives, no, he shall be called John. 
And how many of you know relationships, relatives, can be kind of uh, pushy sometimes? But they said to her, there's no one among your relatives who's called by this name. You know, Elizabeth, don't call him John. It's not a good name. You need a different name. There's nobody called John in your family. This is what Yohanan in Hebrew means. God is gracious. Everybody say, God is gracious. Who picked out his name? God picked out his name. God had been silent for 400 years. And when the Father speaks, you know what he says? I am gracious. And six months later, what does he do? He brings the Savior of the world into the planet on our behalf. Someone say hallelujah. That's good news, amen? That's good news. Verse 62, so they made signs to the father. Zacharias, we're talking to you. What should we call the baby? And he asked for a writing tablet. I told you all, didn't make that up. He wrote saying, his name is John. So they all marveled. He had, like I said, I'm sure he'd been writing that for the last nine months. His name is John Deere. I'm not disobeying God again. I've learned my lesson. That's why I'm sitting here writing to you instead of talking to you. His name's John. Now, don't argue. Tell the relatives. Hold their peace. His name is John. And look at this. Immediately, as soon as he wrote, his name is John, immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue loose, and he spoke, praising God. Do you see the picture? The silence was broken when Zacharias wrote, his name is God is gracious. Unmute it. The Holy Spirit came upon him and he began to praise the Lord. Amen? The silence ended. John was sealed by covenant and his name, God is gracious, was declared. The prophecy of Malachi 4 for the first coming of Messiah was about to be fulfilled. God was speaking, and the silence was broken, and it was broken when God said, God is gracious. And six months later, he sends the redemption of all of humanity for all time, the one and only Savior who shall ever be, and the only one Savior who the world shall ever have an opportunity to experience salvation and being brought back to a right relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 1, verse 39. Now Mary arose in those days, went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah. She was pregnant by this time. She entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. Now this is before John was born. Elizabeth was still pregnant. She was pregnant. Remember, I told you Elizabeth was pregnant six months prior. That means there was three months where they were both pregnant together. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb. Why? He just got filled with the Holy Spirit. Who's the baptizer in the Holy Spirit? Jesus. Jesus even in Mary's womb. Because he's God was able to see to it that John was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And when she heard the voice of Mary, the Holy Spirit filled John. And Elizabeth also was filled with the Holy Spirit. Isn't that amazing? Gabriel had prophesied that John would be filled with the Holy Spirit from the womb. This is when it happened, right here. When Jesus inside of Mary, Mary didn't do it, Jesus did it. He's the only one who can baptize with the Holy Spirit, amen? And Jesus, even as a babe, and John just like leaps in her womb, filled with the Holy Spirit. And then Elizabeth's filled with the Holy Spirit. And she literally begins to prophesy right after that. It's an amazing story if you get a chance to read the whole thing. Elizabeth was also filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to be and remain filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Something's going to fill your life. 
Let me say that again. Let me say that again. Something is going to fill your life. It's either going to be filled with the world, television, entertainment, covetousness, material things, addictive things, sinful things, or it's going to be filled with God's things. And if you want filled with God's things, you need to be filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. Singing to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord. That's your spiritual barometer, amen? Every day, every day, Father, fill me to overflowing through your Holy Spirit. I've already been baptized with the Holy Spirit, but every day I need my life to be filled to overflowing. Because the world, just like water, will suck it out of you. How many of you ever experienced that, amen? You go through a week and you're just like barely hanging on for spiritual life. Man, we need to have life to what? Give life. In order to be fruitful, you need to be a fruit of tree, amen? You need to be filled with the Spirit daily. Coming in for a landing. Here we go. Luke chapter 1, last scriptures, verse 42 through verse 45. Then she, Elizabeth, spoke with a loud voice and said, Now remember, Mary just showed up. Jesus is in her womb. John just got baptized with the Holy Spirit. Baby John in her womb just got filled with the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth just got filled with the Holy Spirit. All this is going down right here. And all of a sudden, she says, Elizabeth begins to prophesy and says, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? How'd she know that? The Holy Spirit told her that the Lord God was inside of Mary's womb. That gives me chills too, amen? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Now we know because we have the whole story, he got the Holy Spirit right then, amen? Blessed is she who what? Believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. Listen, we want this to be said of us, that faith in the Lord Jesus and absolute trust and confidence in the Lord. Blessed are you who believed. Because when you believe, all the things that God has promised throughout all of Scripture will one day be fulfilled. And you and I will literally be before his throne. And I'll be praising the Lord, you'll be praising the Lord, and we'll be very thankful that we listened and obeyed the word of God, that we didn't get caught up in all the craziness that's out there. Someone say amen. That we stayed filled with the Holy Spirit, that we allowed Jesus Christ to be our living Lord each and every day of our life. Amen? Let's stand to our feet. Are you blessed this morning? After 400 years of silence, God speaks. And his first words to mankind is, God is gracious. First words, God is gracious. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful picture for us. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Saints praying around the room. Prayer, guys, as well.